Sir Isaac Newton was an English mathematician, physicist, astronomer, alchemist, theologian, and author. Newton was born on Christmas Day, December 25, 1642 at Woolsthorpe Manor and Woolsthorpe by Colsterworth, a hamlet in the county of Lincolnshire. His father, also named Isaac Newton, had died three months before. Born prematurely, Newton was a small child, his mother Hannah Askew reportedly said that he could have fit inside a quart mug. When Newton was three, his mother remarried and went to live with her new husband, the Reverend Barnabas Smith, leaving her son in the care of his maternal grandmother, Marjorie Askew. Newton disliked his stepfather and maintained some enmity towards his mother for marrying him. Newton's mother had three children from her second marriage. From the age of about 12 until he was 17, Newton was educated at the King's School, Grantham, which taught Latin and ancient Greek and probably imparted a significant foundation of mathematics. He was removed from school and returned to Woolsthorpe by Colsterworth by October 1659. His mother, widowed for the second time, attempted to make him a farmer, an occupation he hated. Henry Stokes, master at the King's School, persuaded his mother to send him back to school. Motivated partly by a desire for revenge against a schoolyard bully, he became the top-ranked student, distinguishing himself mainly by building sundials and models of windmills. In June 1661, he was admitted to Trinity College, Cambridge, on the recommendation of his uncle Reverend William S. Q., who had studied there. He started as a subsizer, paying his way by performing valet's duties, until he was awarded a scholarship in 1664, guaranteeing him four more years until he could get his M.A. degree. In 1665, he discovered the generalized binomial theorem and began to develop a mathematical theory that later became calculus. Soon after Newton had obtained his BA degree in August 1665, the university temporarily closed as a precaution against the Great Plague. Although he had been undistinguished as a Cambridge student, Newton's private studies at his home in Woolsthorpe over the subsequent two years saw the development of his theories on calculus, optics, and the law of gravitation. In April 1667, he returned to Cambridge and in October was elected as a Fellow of Trinity. Fellows were required to become ordained priests, although this was not enforced in the Restoration years and an assertion of conformity to the Church of England was sufficient. However, by 1675 the issue could not be avoided and by then his unconventional views stood in the way. Nevertheless, Newton managed to avoid it by means of special permission from Charles II. His studies had impressed the Leucasian professor Isaac Barrow, who was more anxious to develop his own religious and administrative potential. In 1669 Newton succeeded him, only one year after receiving his M.A. He was elected a Fellow of the Royal Society in 1672. Newton's work on the mathematics, usually referred to as fluxions or calculus, seen in a manuscript of October 1666, is now published among Newton's mathematical papers. Newton later became involved in a dispute with Leibniz over priority in the development of calculus. His work extensively uses calculus in geometric form based on limiting values of the ratios of vanishingly small quantities. Newton had been reluctant to publish his calculus because he feared controversy and criticism. He was close to the Swiss mathematician Nicolas Fossio de Duillier. In 1691, Duillier started to write a new version of Newton's Principia, and corresponded with Leibniz. In 1693, the relationship between Duillier and Newton deteriorated and the book was never completed. Starting in 1699, other members of the Royal Society accused Leibniz of plagiarism. The dispute then broke out in full force in 1711 when the Royal Society proclaimed in a study that it was Newton who was the true discoverer and labeled Leibniz a fraud, it was later found that Newton wrote the study's concluding remarks on Leibniz. Thus began the bitter controversy which marred the lives of both Newton and Leibniz until the Leibniz death in 1716. Newton is generally credited with the generalized binomial theorem valid for any exponent. He discovered Newton's identities, Newton's method, classified cubic plane curves, made substantial contributions to the theory of finite differences, and was the first to use fractional indices and to employ coordinate geometry to derive solutions to Diophantine equations. He approximated partial sums of the harmonic series by logarithms and was the first to use power series with confidence and to revert power series. Newton's work on infinite series was inspired by Simon Stevens' decimals. When Newton received his M.A. and became a Fellow of the College of the Holy and Undivided Trinity in 1667. Up until this point he had not thought much about religion and had twice signed his agreement to the 39 Articles, the basis of Church of England doctrine. 
he was appointed Lucasian Professor of Mathematics in 1669, on Barrow's recommendation. During that time, any fellow of a college at Cambridge or Oxford was required to take holy orders and become an ordained Anglican priest. However, the terms of the Lucasian professorship required that the holder not be active in the church so as to have more time for science. Newton argued that this should exempt him from the ordination requirement, and Charles II, whose permission was needed, accepted this argument. Thus a conflict between Newton's religious views and Anglican orthodoxy was averted. In 1666, Newton observed that the spectrum of colors exiting a prism in the position of minimum deviation is oblong, even when the light ray entering the prism is circular, which is to say, the prism refracts different colors by different angles. This led him to conclude that color is a property intrinsic to light, a point which had, until then, been a matter of debate. From 1670 to 1672, Newton lectured on optics. During this period he investigated the refraction of light, demonstrating that the multicolored image produced by a prism, which he named a spectrum, could be recomposed into white light by a lens and a second prism. He showed that colored light does not change its properties by separating out a colored beam and shining it on various objects, and that regardless of whether reflected, scattered, or transmitted, the light remains the same color. Thus, he observed that color is the result of objects interacting with already colored light rather than objects generating the color themselves. This is known as Newton's theory of color. From this work, he concluded that the lens of any refracting telescope would suffer from the dispersion of light into colors. As a proof of the concept, he constructed a telescope using reflective mirrors instead of lenses as the objective to bypass that problem. Building the design, the first known functional reflecting telescope, today known as a Newtonian telescope, involved solving the problem of a suitable mirror material and shaping technique. Newton ground his own mirrors out of a custom composition of highly reflective speculum metal, using Newton's rings to judge the quality of the optics for his telescopes. In late 1668, he was able to produce this first reflecting telescope. It was about 8 inches long and it gave a clearer and larger image. In 1671, the Royal Society asked for a demonstration of his reflecting telescope. Their interest encouraged him to publish his notes, of colors, which he later expanded into the work optics. When Robert Hooke criticized some of Newton's ideas, Newton was so offended that he withdrew from public debate. Newton and Hooke had brief exchanges in 1680, when Hooke, appointed to manage the Royal Society's correspondence, opened up a correspondence intended to elicit contributions from Newton to Royal Society transactions, which had the effect of stimulating Newton to work out a proof that the elliptical form of planetary orbits would result from a centripetal force inversely proportional to the square of the radius vector. But the two men remained generally on poor terms until Hooke's death. Newton argued that light is composed of particles or corpuscles, which were refracted by accelerating into a denser medium. He verged on sound-like waves to explain the repeated pattern of reflection and transmission by thin films, but still retained his theory of fits that disposed corpuscles to be reflected or transmitted. However, later physicists favored a purely wave-like explanation of light to account for the interference patterns and the general phenomenon of diffraction. Today's quantum mechanics, photons, and the idea of wave-particle duality bear only a minor resemblance to Newton's understanding of light. In his Hypothesis of Light of 1675, Newton posited the existence of the ether to transmit forces between particles. The contact with the Cambridge Platonist philosopher Henry Moore revived his interest in alchemy. He replaced the ether with occult forces based on hermetic ideas of attraction and repulsion between particles. Newton's interest in alchemy cannot be isolated from his contributions to science. This was at a time when there was no clear distinction between alchemy and science. In 1704, Newton published Optics, in which he expounded his corpuscular theory of light. He considered light to be made up of extremely subtle corpuscles. Newton also constructed a primitive form of a frictional electrostatic generator, using a glass globe. In his book Optics, Newton was the first to show a diagram using a prism as a beam expander, and also the use of multiple prism rays. Some 278 years after Newton's discussion, multiple prism beam expanders became central to the development of narrow line width tunable lasers. Also, the use of these prismatic beam expanders led to the multiple prism dispersion theory. Subsequent to Newton, much has been amended. Young and Fresnel combined Newton's particle theory with Huygens' wave theory to show that color is the visible manifestation of light's wavelength. Science also slowly came to realize the difference between perception of color and mathematizable optics. In 1679, 
Newton returned to his work on celestial mechanics by considering gravitation and its effect on the orbits of planets with reference to Kepler's laws of planetary motion. This followed stimulation by a brief exchange of letters in 1679 to 1680 with Hooke, who had been appointed to manage the Royal Society's correspondence, and who opened a correspondence intended to elicit contributions from Newton to Royal Society transactions. After the exchanges with Hooke, Newton worked out a proof that the elliptical form of planetary orbits would result from a centripetal force inversely proportional to the square of the radius vector. Newton communicated his results to Edmund Halley and to the Royal Society in De Motor Corporum and Gyrum, a tract written on about nine sheets which was copied into the Royal Society's register book in December 1684. This tract contained the nucleus that Newton developed and expanded to form the book Principia. The Principia was published on July 5, 1687 with encouragement and financial help from Edmund Halley. In this work, Newton stated the three universal laws of motion. Together, these laws describe the relationship between any object, the forces acting upon it and the resulting motion, laying the foundation for classical mechanics. They contributed to many advances during the Industrial Revolution which soon followed and were not improved upon for more than 200 years. Many of these advances continue to be the underpinnings of non-relativistic technologies in the modern world. He used the Latin word gravitas for the effect that would become known as gravity, and define the law of universal gravitation. In the same work, Newton presented a calculus-like method of geometrical analysis using first and last ratios, gave the first analytical determination of the speed of sound in air, inferred the obliqueness of Earth's spheroidal figure, accounted for the precession of the equinoxes as a result of the Moon's gravitational attraction on the Earth's obliqueness, initiated the gravitational study of the irregularities in the motion of the Moon, provided a theory for the determination of the orbits of comets, and much more. Newton made clear his heliocentric view of the solar system, developed in a somewhat modern way because already in the mid-1680s he recognized the deviation of the Sun from the center of gravity of the solar system. Newton's postulate of an invisible force able to act over vast distances led to him being criticized for introducing occult agencies into science. Later, in the second edition of the Principia, Newton firmly rejected such criticisms in a concluding general scolium, writing that it was enough that the phenomena implied a gravitational attraction, as they did, but they did not so far indicate its cause, and it was both unnecessary and improper to frame hypotheses of things that were not implied by the phenomena. With the book Principia, Newton became internationally recognized. He acquired a circle of admirers, including the Swiss-born mathematician Nicolas Fossio de Duillier. In 1710, Newton found 72 of the 78 species of cubic curves and categorized them into four types. In 1717, and probably with Newton's help, James Sterling proved that every cubic was one of these four types. Newton also claimed that the four types could be obtained by plane projection from one of them, and this was proved in 1731 four years after his death. In the 1690s, Newton wrote a number of religious tracts dealing with the literal and symbolic interpretation of the Bible. Newton was also a member of the Parliament of England for Cambridge University in 1689 and 1701, but according to some accounts his only comments were to complain about a cold draft in the chamber and request that the window be closed. Newton moved to London to take up the post of Warden of the Royal Mint in 1696, a position that he had obtained through the patronage of Charles Montague. He took charge of England's great recoining, trod on the toes of Lord Lucas, governor of the tower, and secured the job of deputy comptroller of the temporary Chester branch for Edmund Halley. Newton became perhaps the best-known master of the mint upon the death of Thomas Neal in 1699, a position Newton held for the last 30 years of his life. These appointments were intended as sinecures, but Newton took them seriously. He retired from his Cambridge duties in 1701 and exercised his authority to reform the currency and punish clippers and counterfeiters. As warden, and afterwards as master, of the Royal Mint, Newton estimated that 20% of the coins taken in during the great recoinage of 1696 were counterfeit. Counterfeiting was high treason, punishable by the felon being hanged, drawn and quartered. Despite this, convicting even the most flagrant criminals could be extremely difficult, however, Newton proved equal to the task. Disguised as a habitué of bars and taverns, he gathered much of that evidence himself. For all the barriers placed to prosecution, and separating the branches of government, English law still had ancient and formidable customs of authority. Newton had himself made a justice of the peace in all the home counties. A draft letter regarding the matter is included in Newton's personal first edition of Philosophie Naturalis Principia Mathematica, which he must have been amending at the time. 
Then he conducted more than 100 cross-examinations of witnesses, informers, and suspects between June 1698 and Christmas 1699. Newton successfully prosecuted 28 coiners. Newton was made president of the Royal Society in 1703 and an associate of the French Académie des Sciences. In his position at the Royal Society, Newton made an enemy of John Flamsteed, the astronomer royal, by prematurely publishing Flamsteed's Historia Colestis Britannica, which Newton had used in his studies. In April 1705, Queen Anne knighted Newton during a royal visit to Trinity College, Cambridge. The knighthood is likely to have been motivated by political considerations connected with the parliamentary election in May 1705, rather than any recognition of Newton's scientific work or services as Master of the Mint. Newton was the second scientist to be knighted, after Francis Bacon. As a result of a report written by Newton on September 21, 1717 to the Lord's Commissioners of His Majesty's Treasury, the bimetallic relationship between gold coins and silver coins was changed by a royal proclamation on December 22, 1717, forbidding the exchange of gold guineas for more than 21 silver shillings. This inadvertently resulted in a silver shortage as silver coins were used to pay for imports, while exports were paid for in gold, effectively moving Britain from the silver standard to its first gold standard. It is a matter of debate as to whether he intended to do this or not. It has been argued that Newton conceived of his work at the Mint as a continuation of his alchemical work. Newton was invested in the South Sea Company and lost some £20,000 when it collapsed in around 1720. Toward the end of his life, Newton took up residence at Cranberry Park, near Winchester, with his niece and her husband, until his death. Newton died in his sleep in London on March 20, 1727. He was given a ceremonial funeral, attended by nobles, scientists, and philosophers, and was buried in Westminster Abbey among kings and queens. He is also the first scientist to be buried in the Abbey. After his death, Newton's hair was examined and found to contain mercury, probably resulting from his alchemical pursuits. Mercury poisoning could explain Newton's eccentricity in late life.